Hello everyone, I am Dr. Deepa. Today we will learn about the facial spaces in the palm. In total, there are around three facial line potential spaces occupying the palm that is the mid palmar space, the thinar space and the pulp space of the fingers. These facial space are the potential spaces which are of great surgical importance. We look for the spaces one by one. To begin with the mid palmar space, this mid palmar space is a potential space which lies deep to the palmar aponeurosis. Yes, the facial space lies deep to the palmar aponeurosis. We can see over here the area occupied by the mid palmar space and the thinar space which is shown in the yellow and the green shade over here. This is the cross sectional diagram of the space being mentioned. The yellow here represents the mid palmar space, the green indicating the thinar space. Roughly looking at this picture, we can make out that the mid palmar space lies deep to the palmar aponeurosis and we can see the thinar space lying deep to the thinar eminence and the thinar muscles here. Moving on to the boundaries of the mid palmar space. The mid palmar space as I have told just now lies deep to the aponeurosis that is the palmar aponeurosis. Yes, this mid palmar space is the potential space lying deep to the aponeurosis. It is related anteriorly to the palmar aponeurosis which is seen over here. It is also related to the long flexor tendons of the second, third and the fourth digit along with the lumbricals which lie in relation to the flexor tendon. Posteriorly, the space is seen resting on the metacarpal bones as well as the interosseous muscle as seen here. So this is about the anterior relation and the posterior relation. Medially, the space is related to the medial septum whereas laterally it is related to the intermediate palmar septum. Laterally, the space is related to the intermediate palmar septum which separates the hypothenar from the thinar space. So, this is about the mid palmar space. We can see the mid palmar space which is related anteriorly, posteriorly, medially and laterally. In front or proximally, the space is in communication with the forearm space of Perona. Distally, the space is seen communicating with the digital sheath, facial sheath of the second and the third digit. So this is about the mid palmar space. Moving on to the next that is the thinar space which is seen over here. This thinar space is the potential space lying deep to the thinar eminence and the thinar muscles. We can make out so anterior relation of this thinar space is mainly the thinar muscles that is the three thinar muscles which are the abductor pollicis brevis, the flexor pollicis brevis and the opponent's pollicis brevis seen here and posteriorly it is resting on the muscle that is the adductor pollicis. So the posterior relation of the thinar space is the adductor pollicis muscle. Medially it is related to the intermediate septum which separates it from the hypothenar space and laterally it is related to the lateral palmar septum. It is related to the lateral palmar septum. It, this thinar space is seen communicating proximally with the forearm space of perona whereas distally the space is seen to communicate with the facial sheath of the first digit. So this is about the thinar space. This is the same picture showing the appearance of the mid palmar space and the thinar space over here. The mid palmar space, thinar space which is also seen in the area 
occupying the hand as i told the mid palmar space and the thinar space separated by the intermediate septum as i have told this is the medial septum this is the lateral septum yes this mid palmar space is related anteriorly to the palmar aponeuroses and posteriorly to the metacarpals and the interosseous muscle on the other hand we can make out the thinar space which is related anteriorly to the thinar muscles and posteriorly to the adductor pollicis muscle mainly and later it is also seen related to the metacarpal and the joining interosseous muscle so this is the picture now this is the cross picture showing the area occupied by the mid palmar space and the thinar space here as we can see over here the area which is in brown shade represents the mid palmar space of the hand we can make out the anterior relations of the mid palmar space the posterior relations of the mid palmar space anteriorly as i have already discussed it is related to the long flexor tendons and the lumbricals whereas posteriorly related to the metacarpals and the interosseous muscles on the other hand we can look for the thinar space which is related anteriorly to the thinar muscles and posteriorly to the muscle that is the adductor pollicis of the thumb this is the dissected picture showing again the same space that is the thinar and the mid palmar space thinar space which is seen on the adductor pollicis muscle we can clearly make out the space lying on the adductor pollicis muscle over here and deep to the long flexor tendon on the other hand we can make out the flexor tendons of the other digits along with the lumbricals and the area deep to it lies the mid palmar space this is again the picture to have a clear idea about the area occupied by the thinar space and the mid palmar space which clearly says that the mid palmar space lies deep to the digits that is the third fourth and fifth digit whereas the thinar space lies deep to the tendon of the index finger along with its adjoining first lumbrical muscle so as i have already told the thinar and the mid palmar space are in communication in the proximal part with the forearm space of perona distally they communicate with the facial sheath of the corresponding digit over here next moving on to the pulp space of the fingers this pulp space is a potential space occupying the distal phalanx phalangeal region of the digit the pulp spaces of the fingers they are the space which intervene between the palmar skin and the distal phalanx so it is a space seen between the skin and the terminal phalanx of each digit so this space is occupied by lot many fibrous septae which subdivide the space into numerous tight compartments containing the subcutaneous fat and the blood vessels so this is about the pulp space of the fingers so this is how the pulp space is seen distal to the digital synovial sheath of the corresponding long flexor tendons we can see the pulp space over here and this line represents the fibrous septae which convert this space in as a tight compartment and this mainly contains the subcutaneous fat and the blood vessels so the fibrous septae extend from the skin to the phalanx terminal phalanx in its deeper portion now the distal 1/4/5 of the distal phalanx i repeat the distal 4/5 of the distal phalanx receive its blood supply from the digital arteries by penetrating the dense fibrous septae yes the distal 4/5 receives its blood supply from the digital digital arteries whereas the proximal 1/4 or the proximal 1/5 of the space get separate blood supply without traversing the septae 
so this is about the vascular supply so the distal one fifth gets its supply from the digital arteries which penetrates the dense fibrous septae whereas proximal one fifth gets separate blood supply without traversing the septae so this is about the pulp space of all the digits Lastly, moving on to the very important part of the spaces that is the applied or the clinical anatomy of the spaces, facial spaces of the hand. The facial spaces that is the mid palmar space, the thinar space and the pulse spaces are of great clinical importance as these spaces are more prone for the infection and collection of the space as it is a dead potential space. The spaces can be distended and filled with pus. So, in such conditions, the drainage of the pus has to be done. Incision and drainage of the pus is the mode of treatment over here. So, due this picture represents the incision to be taken when the space is being infected. The, during the infection of the thinar space, the incision is mainly taken in the first web along the posterior aspect. So, this represents, so this is the area where the incision has to be taken during the infection of the thinar space. So, this is the incision to be taken for the thinar space infection. In case of infection of the mid palmar space, the incision is taken in between the third and the fourth digit or the web space between the fourth and the fifth digit. So, this is the important location for the incision of the infection involving the mid palmar space. In cases of infection involving the pulp space, the incision is taken along the lateral plane of the corresponding digit. So, the infection involving the pulp spaces, the incision is taken along the lateral planes of the corresponding digit to drain out the pus. So, here in the distal portion of the forearm, these lines represents the incision to be taken during the infection involving the forearm space of perona forearm space of perona. So, this forearm space of perona is located deep to the long flexor tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus and in front of the pronator quadratus muscle. So, the thinar and the mid palmar space as I have already told is seen to communicate proximally with this forearm space of perona. So, this is about the incisions area of incision to be taken during the treatment line of the infection involving the corresponding spaces. The infection of the pulse space needs a special mention over here as this infection involving this pulse space is given a special name called as Whitlow. The Whitlow represents the infection involving the pulse spaces of the pulp spaces of the fingers. So, during the infection of the pulp spaces, the tension is increased due to lot many tight interceptal spaces leading to the severe thrombing pain of the corresponding digit. So, the infection of the pulp spaces is drained as I have already told through the lateral incision of the corresponding digit. In case of neglected cases, leads to the severe avascular necrosis of the digit involving the distal 4 fifth of the terminal phalanx but the basal 1 fifth of the bone remains unaffected because it has got a separate blood supply. So, this is about the applied anatomy related to the spaces of the hand. So, we have end up the facial spaces of the hand. We have studied about the location of the space, the relations of the space, the boundaries of the space, communication and lastly the clinical importance of each space over here. Thank you.